Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Hive Drama Fest 2021. Let's hear a big round of applause. <laughs> Believe it or not, this is day six of a seven day theater festival. It's day seven. My God, that should tell you something. I'm losing track. <laughs> well, it's day seven of our seven-day theatre festival. The Hive Theatre Fest uh, 2021 has been the single largest effort to build community theatre for children in the region, in the history of theatre in this region. We've got 1,000 people who have watched these plays. We've had over 200 human beings on this stage. We have 17 plays and a film that have been screened through this seven day period and it has been nothing short of magnificent. So for all the people putting this together, the actors in the audience and the actors backstage, can we hear a massive round of applause? You're gonna be watching two plays as part of one show today. Uh, but before we tell you a little bit more about these plays, some very important rules. The sound booth is right back here behind all the audience members. So I know who's on WhatsApp and I know who's on Facebook and I know who's scrolling, scrolling through their Instagram feed. So rule number one of being in a theater is to put your phone away and make sure that it is on silent. Do remember that a lot of these actors, it's their first or second time on stage. So if at all a phone or an alarm does go off during their show, it can be extremely disorienting. So we request you to please put your phones on silent. The second rule of uh, being in this theater is that we need to have you engaged and by engaged we mean clap if you like the scene, laugh if you find a joke funny, but make sure that your eyes are on our actors at all times. After all, it has been six months and a lot of heart and hard work that's gone in to bringing this thing alive that will come alive only for one hour. So for this hour, we really request that your eyes be on stage. Is that all right? Awesome, thank you. <laughs> on the street parts at Robo, make sure that you guys keep your masks on at all times. There's a heavy DTCM fine for anybody found not wearing their masks in the theater. So do make sure that you have your masks on at all times. Um, our actors are actually backstage and in the audience right now. And their heart is pounding and their stomach is full of butterflies and they're feeling nervous, all kinds of nervous. So if you give them a big round of applause, they'll know that you're here for them. Thank you very much. The first play that you are going to watch as part of this two play show is called Covered Up. As we walk around our theater every day, as young people coming to class, we see faces every day all the time. Women, men, tall, short, faces with freckles, people with glowing olive skin, people with dark African skin, people with birthmarks and scars, women who are curvy and thin and tall and athletic and muscular and wide-hipped and narrow-hipped, and people with different hairstyles and textures and colors. And it's all beautiful. It's beautiful and diverse and different. But we go back home and we pick up our phones or a beauty magazine. We look on Instagram for beauty products and all we see are tall, white, skinny men and women who look nothing like us. That's what this play is all about. How we look, how we look at each other, how we look in the mirror, all seen through the eyes of teenagers. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Covered Up. Really? That's a huge percentage. Who would think so many of you are dissatisfied with the way you look? Not me, I'm telling you that. Maybe those 80% need constant reassurance that they are beautiful. This is gonna blow your mind. 53% of girls are unhappy with their bodies at the age of 13. 80% of 10 year olds worry about being fat. 70% of kids in middle school are unhappy and dissatisfied with two or more parts of their body. 30% of 14-year-olds are actively dieting. By the age of 6, kids start feeling dissatisfied with the way they look. I bet 
That's because of the social media exposure at a younger age. And you will only be my friend. Okay. And you and I will do everything together. Okay. What if I sometimes want to do something else? No, you cannot. If you want to be my friend, you have to always do what I do. But what if I want to do something else? You cannot. My mom says that you and I should always do everything together. Did you get any pics? <laughs> you know it. So, 
check this out, yeah? So his face turned this awesome shade of green, and that's her. <laughs> when you what? And and um, that that's one <laughs> out. What what's the matter with you? I, I don't. I don't. I'm not doing. Don't worry. <laughs> Page. 
We have a plan. You and me? Oh, sorry, sorry. You and Stacy and Paige. We have a plan. And how long have you been working on said plan? You and me have class together, walking to and school from years now, and we have a uh, we watch movies on Fridays. In gym. In gym. We don't take gym together, do we? So you give up with this popularity plan for high school with Stacy and Paige in gym. You can't be mad at me. I can't? I can't. Why can't I do it? You said it yourself. You're not going to be popular in high school. You guaranteed it. I did say that. That's, you're weird on focus. You have a very weird layer. I am who I am. That's not my fault. That's right. It's all my fault. I brought this on myself. Let's not forget that. So, so, see? Apparently not. Charlotte, what if I change? What if I threw myself to my knees and said, please be my friend? I'll change. I'll change everything about myself. Would that be enough for you? For Stacy and Paige? No. No, I don't think so. That means it's not me, Charlie. It's you. You need to be changed to be liked. I don't need to change. Sounds like you have a plan to do. I have to go divide some fractions or do some other weird thing. Sounds like you should go. The one thing that is true for the human race is that the generation gap is very much a thing. Your grandparents didn't like how your parents dressed, your parents don't like how you dress, and you won't or don't like how your kids dress. <laughs> I'm here. 
about? Lies! Lies! There's not! Everything's cool! I'm fine! Sweetie, where, where did we go wrong? I oh. feel like such a failure! <laughs>
Your cheekbones need to be high. Your collarbones need to pop. Your ribs cannot show. And in your teen years, basically, you will attempt to rearrange, restructure the 206 bones given in your body. Science tells us you can't achieve it. Beauty magazines will tell you, you must try. <laughs> there is no perfect shape or size or color or hair or structure you can ever have. No matter what you look like, this 700 square feet of a supermarket, it will make you feel like you don't look right, like you don't have enough, like you will never have enough. And you may not see it at 13 or 14. But I assure you of this. By the time you hit your 20s, each time you visit the mall, a part of you will fall away. It chips at you like a dedicated sculpture. You stop laughing, you stop opening your mouth too wide, you stop leaning in, sitting back, or jumping, running, hooping, or farting, or you become what they want you to become. Empty eyes, looking at a supermarket shelf, looking to fill what's missing. The first thing people notice about me is that I'm on the wheelchair and that's it. The whole presumption about me is built around that. What they don't see is that I love to dance and I love to make TikTok videos. I am an inspirational speaker. I run a social initiative, non-profit, and uh, I love going on holidays. I am known to have a short temper, but I'm working on it. I'm an uh, aspiration actor and dearly loved. Sit 
did, but I can't tell them that. What they think of me? Whining and crying about my scar. <laughs> I've spent so many days and nights just praying it would go away. Just, just disappear on this hideous looking me. <laughs> Wait, don't tell me. Let me guess. It's a shark bite. <laughs> oh, you got it on an adventurous trek. No, no, I know. He got a bear. <laughs> oh, you... No. <clears throat> what is going on? They think it's cool. <laughs> they don't think I look weird. I look like Frankenstein's bride? <laughs> no, 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 no. no. They... What? They... I've been tiptoeing around the changing rooms. Wishing and praying, I, I had it to myself, so I wouldn't have been seen. But I guess I was wrong. They don't see what I see. What I saw. <laughs> oh gosh, tell us already. Okay, okay. Uh, it was a, um, uh, a shark bite. Yeah, shark bite. Shark bite. Hey, damn cool, man. Damn cool. I know. I know what you're thinking. <laughs> it's not a shark bite. But think about it. In a way, it is a battle scar, right? My body fought something and I made out stronger. And now I have this scar to show for it. Or was there some brainstorm of money that magically appeared over the parking lot? 
raining thousand dirham bills. There's a pair of shoes! There's a swoop! Pardon me? How could I miss a thousand dollar swoop? <laughs> so what are you saying? I can't get the shoes? No shoes! No shoes! Not in this lifetime or the next. There's blows! I agree. It blows big time. You're ruining my life! I take full responsibility. Thanks for nothing, Mom! If you can find one that clean your room, I'll reconsider. <laughs> <laughs> Shop, 
distraught and all because of a skirt. Take diet pills or laxatives? 
Even more frightening is the fact that 42% of first and third grade girls have an outspoken desire of being thinner. Hello, I'm Dr. Elba Iglesias. I'm the medical director of adolescent medicine at Joe DiMaggio Children's Hospital. The first thing every parent must know about eating disorders is that this is an issue that requires medical attention. And it not only affects girls, but boys too. This is such a great party. I love the music. It really is a great party. The decorations are fast. I love the lighting. So classy. Venue is amazing too, isn't it? You can't pass it so easily. Thank you. I'm so glad you guys liked it. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you, Nazim. Happy birthday to you. Come on now. Take the cake. Oh, I'm sorry. I can't eat cake. The sugar makes my acne gray out. <laughs> oh, you don't know me. I'm lactose intolerant. But it's not nice good. <laughs> it's really great, thank you. Darkness. I don't get what 
haven't changed. It took me a while to realize they were commenting on the skin of the color of my skin. Up until now, I had never considered it to be a problem. Okay. I grew more and more self-conscious. I went out and bought myself some tennis creams, and I hide them at the back of my cupboard so my mom doesn't know. Please don't tell her I told you. She'd be really disappointed. Because she's raised me to be better. But her skin color got to do with anything. I feel so bad that I'm ashamed of something and will hold no value. They're constant whispering and talking and talking behind my backs. I can't. I've tried ignoring. I really have. And this one time, my friend Dara, she pretended to dump something off my back. It was a post-it. That she had black beauty. By the time I've been jealized, I've been pranked, the whole class was laughing at me. It must have been really tough. I ran out of school and locked myself in my room. I didn't want to see anyone ever again. Tanya, you know you can't hide. And you don't need to. But the things they say. Like you said, the color of your skin has no value to who you are on the inside. To your talents as a player. They don't see me as a player anymore. All they see is the color of my skin. And your classmates. Their opinion is important to your game. No. You said the thing you like most about the game is for making the basket, right? So, your classmates and their approval, are there any consequences to that? No. It okay. isn't. Okay. Are you going to try the game again? I feel better and I have more clarity, but I need more time. And that's fine too. And 
as small as you are, the person who wrote this letter, I'm pretty delightful. I've got a good personality and a great brain. And I'm strong and I can run. I'm mighty, I'm resilient. And I'm going to do something with my life because I believe in myself. Can you say the same? Okay, look, life is too short to judge others. It's not your job to tell someone who they are or what they feel. So why not spend some time on yourself instead? Look, I don't know you, but I can guarantee you have some issues you can work on. I want you all to remember this. You are wanted. Big, small, tall, short, pretty, plain, friendly. And don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Not even yourself. Especially not yourself. And as I changed into my pajamas, I thought, everyone has a moment in history which particularly belongs to them. This is mine. Thank you for being such a wonderful audience, ladies and gentlemen. We would now like to engage in a social experiment. You may have heard of this trending social experiment where you open out your hands like this. Can we ask all of you to please stand up and hold your hands open like this? Put a finger down if you've ever been made to feel like you don't belong. Put a finger down if you've not been included because of the way you look or the way you speak. Put a finger down if you wanted to speak with a therapist but haven't found the courage. Put a finger down if you've been pressurized into buying something you didn't need. Put a finger down if you've tried to lighten your skin with a filter or a product. Put a finger down if you were scared when your body started to change. Put a finger down if you've ever thought about what it would be like to permanently change a feature. Put a finger down if you've ever felt ugly. Put a finger down if you've gone on a crash diet in the hopes to fit a size. Put a finger down if you've been pressured into buying something you didn't need and really couldn't afford. Put a finger down if your parents ever asked you to wear something you didn't like. Now look around you and take it all in. And know that you're not alone. Know that your experience, while being unique to you, shades of it have been experienced by others. Now is the time that we find a way to change that. Find ways to not force anyone to feel the need to cover up their emotions, their experience and themselves. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. We now take a 10 minute interval and when we come back after the break, an equally goosebump giving play called is anybody listening? Yes. 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 Yes.